Hello beautiful, welcome to another reading of Captain Frederick Marriott's diary, published in 1839. Let's jump right in and see what the good captain is up to. Crossed over to New Jersey and took the railroad to view the falls of the Passaic River, about 15 miles from New York. This water power has given birth to Patterson, a town with 10,000 inhabitants, where a variety of manufactures is carried on. A more beautiful wild spot can hardly be conceived, and to a European who has been accustomed to travel far in search of these picturesque, it appears singular. Independent of their beauty, they are, perhaps, the most singular falls that are known to exist. The whole country is of trap formation, and the black rocks rise up strictly vertical. The river, which at the falls is about 100 pours over a bed of rock between hills covered with chestnut, walnut, pine, and sycamore, all mingled together, and descending to the edge of the bank, their bright and various foliage forming a lovely contrast to the clear, rushing water. The bed of black rock over which the river runs is, at the fall, suddenly split in two, vertically, and across the whole width of the river. The fissure is about 70 feet deep, and not more than 12 feet wide at any part. Down into this chasm pour the whole waters of the river, escaping You may, therefore, stand on the opposite side of the chasm, looking up the river within a few feet of the fall, and watch the roaring waters as they precipitate themselves below. In this position, with the swift, clear, but not deep waters before you, forcing their passage through the rocky bed, with waving trees on each side, their branches feathering to the water's edge, or dipping and rising, stream. You might imagine yourself far removed from your fellow men, and you feel that in such a beauteous spot you could well turn and write and commune with nature alone. But turn round with your back to the fall, look below, and all is changed. Art in full activity, Millions of reels whirling in their sockets. The bright polished cylinders incessantly turning and never tiring. What formerly was the occupation of thousands of industrious females who sat with their distaff at the cottage door is now affected in a hundredth part of the time and in every variety by those compressed machines which require but the attendance of one child to several hundreds. But machinery cannot perform everything, and notwithstanding this reduction of labor, the romantic falls of the Passaic find employment for the industry of thousands. We walked up the banks of the river above the fall, and met with about twenty or thirty urchins who were bathing at the mouth of the cut. Made for supply of the water power to the manufacturers below. The river is the property of an individual and is very valuable. He receives six hundred dollars per annum for one square foot of water power. Ten years hence, it will be rented at a much higher price. 
and we amused ourselves by throwing small pieces of money into the water, where it was about a fathom deep, for the boys to dive after. They gained them too easily. We went to another part, and the cut, where it was much deeper, and threw in a dollar. The boys stood naked on the rocks, like so many cormorants waiting to dart upon their prey. When the dollar sink to the bottom. The word was given. They all dashed down like lightning and disappeared. About a minute elapsed ere there was any sign of their reappearance. When they came up one by one, breathless and flushed, like racers who had pulled up, and at last the victor appeared with the dollar between his teeth. We left those juvenile sand patches and returned to the town. There is no part of the world, perhaps, where you have more difficulty in obtaining permission to be alone and indulge in reverie than in America. The Americans are as gregarious as schoolboys and think it an incivility to leave you by yourself. Everything is done in crowds, and among a crowd, they even prefer a double bed to a single one. And I have often had the offer to sleep with me made out of the real kindness. You must go east of the sunrise, or west of sunset, if you would have solitude. I never was in a more meditative humor, more anxious to be left to my own dreamings, than when I ascended the railroad car with my companion to return to Jersey City. We were the only two in that division of the car, and my friend, who understood me, had the complacence to go fast asleep. I could indulge in my own castle buildings and allow my fleeting thoughts to pass over my brain. Like the scud over the moon. At our first stoppage, a third party stepped in and seated himself between us. He looked at my companion, who was fast asleep. He turned to me, and I turned away my head. Once more was I standing at the falls of the Passaic. Once more were the waters rolling down before me, the trees gracefully waving their boughs to the breeze, and the spray I was born in the very heart of Cheshire, sir. Confound the fellow, the river, falls, foliage, all vanished at once, and I found myself sitting in a railroad car, which I had been unconscious of, with a heavy lump of humanity by my side. I wished one of those largest Cheshire cheeses down his throat. Indeed. Yes, sir, in the very heart of Cheshire. Would you had stayed there, thought I, turning away to the window without replying. Will you oblige me with a pinch of your snuff, sir? I left my box at New York. I gave him the box, and when he helped himself, laid it down on the vacant seat opposite to him that he might not have to apply it again, and fell back and shut my eyes as a hint to him that I did not wish to enter into conversation. A pause ensued, and I had hopes, but they were delusive. I had been eighteen years in this country, sir. You appear to be quite Americanized, thought I, but I made him no answer. I went up to Patterson, sir, continued he, now turning round to me and speaking in my ear. 
thinking that I could get to Philadelphia by that route, and found that I had made a mistake. So I have come back. I am told are some pretty falls there, sir. Would you were beneath them, thought I. But I could not help laughing at the idea of a man going to Patterson and returning without seeing the falls. By this time he had awakened his companion, who, being American himself, and finding that there was to be no more sleep, took him up in the American fashion and put to him successively the following questions, all of which were answered without hesitation. What is your name? Where are you from? Where are you going? What is your profession? How many dollars have you made? Have you a wife and children? All these being duly responded to, he asked my companion who I might be, and was told that I was an operative artist, and one of the first cotton spinners in the country. This communication procured for me considerable difference from our new acquaintance during the remainder of our journey. He observed in the ear of my companion that he thought I knew a thing or two. In a country like America, the utilitarian will always command respect. All right, beautiful. That does it for today's episode.